How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here at my new little FPV quad workstation at the house. Lately I've been doing a lot of flying and I've been enjoying the X220s by Ishin. Uh, I got the first one, did a review about it back when I didn't really know a whole lot about the hobby, but now that we're almost two months in, I think I have some knowledge I can bestow upon some of you new FPV flyers or people who are just now entering the hobby. Save yourself some heartache and some hassle. Simulators. Yes, get started with simulators. And I'm sure you've heard this many different times from other people, um, whether it's liftoff or drone racing league simulator, or whether it's even the Grand Theft Auto mod. Regardless, get used to flying acro mode in a simulator first and use a real RC radio, something that you're gonna be using along with your quad. So right now I'm using the Tyrannus X9D Plus and it works great both for controlling the quad in the air in real life and also controlling a simulator on the computer. That also goes for tricks. If you wanna learn how to do some barrel rolls, you wanna do some flips and some split S's and power loops and all that stuff, do it on the simulator first. My first power loop ended with me uh, head first in the ground. One of my first uh, back flips ended with me going in the ground. I would suggest getting a good quality charger to start out. Even if you have only a couple batteries, make sure you can get something that's gonna charge more than one battery at once and actually has a readout that's telling you what it's doing. Um, I made the mistake when I first started of getting a bunch of these one battery chargers and I had like four or five of them and a couple even crapped out on me, which is why I have three left. Also when you're charging, number your batteries. That way you can keep track of which one's which, which one's been used already. If you start from number one, sit down when you fly or lean against something that's solid. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll lean against my car or against a tree or I'll sit on something. Standing on your own two feet, at least when you're starting out, can be very disorienting and make you feel a little bit dizzy and wobbling back and forth. Uh, I do not recommend it, especially as a first time flyer or something like that. So. Find a place to sit down, bring your own folding chair. Sometimes I'll bring my little drum stool. Next up is crashing and we're all gonna crash. Everyone crashes, even the pros. The problem is when you crash and you break something, which will, by the way, happen all the time. I mean, it happens to me. That's why my drones are, you know, in multiple pieces right now. When you crash, inspect the drone before you move away from the crash site and inspect the area around it. Make sure that you're not losing an antenna, your VTX didn't pop off, you know, something happened, your GoPro popped off that you didn't notice, or even some of these sidewalls, if you have a drone body that has little sidewalls in the frame. I can't tell you how many times I crashed. Uh, I was kind of embarrassed looking around, who saw that? Pick up the drone, yeah, it looks okay, walk back to my car and then realize my antenna's gone or something broke off of my quad, I didn't even notice it. Now I have to walk back to the crash site and, and now I'm trying to remember exactly where I crashed and I'm searching for this small little object that would have been very easy to find if I had looked for it in the exact spot I crashed. I've lost about $60 worth of stuff in tall grass just because I walked away and then realized that I was missing it from the drone's body and then tried to come back and find it and I couldn't because I couldn't find the exact crash site. It was very frustrating. Talking about losing things, you might also consider adding a beeper to your quad. Now, a beeper is gonna make it very easy to find your quad if you crash in leaves or tall grass. Very helpful if you're flying through trees and stuff and there's a lot of leaves on the ground and you know the only other way you could find it would be maybe to arm the quad and, and then listen for the leaves rustling as those props start spinning, which is not good for it. Not good for your ESCs or the props. I would not suggest finding it that way, although if you don't have a beeper, that may be your only option. Next up is repair. And, and part of the reason why I, I mention repair as being a tip uh, is because you need the right type of equipment to repair your, your quad. You need a soldering iron, you know? You need uh, screwdrivers, you need um, hex-shaped uh, drivers there. You might even use something like this, a little helping hand uh, device there. You know, different tapes, um, screws, bolts, heat shrink, uh, extra solder, a lamp that is adjustable so you can really get a good view of what you're working on. Um, just all these little things together add up to to make a good repair experience and, and you're gonna be at, at your repair area a lot. Um, on top of that, I would suggest eye protection. This really only pertains to soldering, but I have had little bits of molten solder flick up into my eye when I'm trying to maybe separate little solder joints or something like that. It's not fun. 
Now for repairing and upgrading, there are a lot of things that you can do. A lot of this stuff makes sense. You're like, okay, well that's cool, that's easy, and it works out. But there's one tip. If I can give you one tip, um, it's that long screws are not always better than short screws. <laughs> if you notice, I'm using different motors from the stock Ishin motors, and the reason being, I burnt out a few. See these screws right here? Well, I thought, hey, if we put longer screws, perhaps they'll stay in better and they'll have less of a risk of wiggling and jiggling out from the vibrations of the frame. Well, what I didn't know is that long screws can actually go inside of the motor if you twist them too much, start touching some of those windings, create a short, and then flame and fire. And that's exactly what I saw. Burnt out two motors and uh, yeah. As I'm trying to get into this hobby more, I'm starting to realize that it really helps to have backups of things. And if I were to crash right now, flying outside, you know, 10 minutes from now, and my motor, my ESC, something blows up, I know that I can go back home and I have another one waiting for me. Instead of ordering something from Amazon as I break it, then having to wait for the shipping two to three days, or if you order from some Chinese supplier, it might take upwards of a week. So ordering four ESCs when you only need a couple, ordering a set of four motors when you only need a couple, perhaps can save you some time in the future when you do have a wreck and then you can just come back and you realize, oh yeah, I've got a few more replacements. I can do that, I can do that. Also, don't forget to keep the old stuff too. I mean, say you got a camera and you wanna upgrade it, keep the old one. Now let's talk about ordering things, you know, like replacements or just upgrades, whatever. I don't like to buy from Chinese companies. Not that I have anything against China, but it's just the fact that it takes so long to get here. If I can buy from a US supplier, I definitely will. And, and with Amazon Prime or something, if I can order on Amazon, I can get it in like a couple days. Now here's a tip that probably could have been earlier in the video, but it only pertains to US flyers. So uh, with the FAA, these quads are definitely heavier than 0.55 pounds. So yes, you have to register your FPV quads. Finally, keep watching YouTube videos. And hopefully you'll come keep watching mine because I'll be putting out a lot more tips and tricks and videos about FPV quads. But there are different YouTube channels like Joshua Bardwell, UAV Futures. I highly recommend YouTube as a source of knowledge for this type of thing. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope this was informative to you. Check the video description for a link to pretty much all the different components that I have put into these quads, um, some of the things that have worked for me. And uh, thanks so much for watching.